Port, uh, Port Adelaide, obviously, um, they've had probably a different start of the season than what a lot of people expected. What's your take on where that at, they're at as opposed to where you're at? Yeah, look, I, I'd probably be lying if I thought there'd be um, five wins, no losses. But but what I, I'm not surprised about is the fact that they're, they're playing good footy because I've had a lot of respect for Ken Hinckley and Alan Richardson for a long time. And I think they're really good at what they do. And they're clearly very fit. Darren Burgess has obviously done a terrific job in getting his, his players uh, fit and they're working really hard. And if you look through their list, um, they've got a number of top five picks on their list and Hamish Hartlett and Travis Boak and Ollie Wines and Chad Wingard. They've got a lot of talent. So when you combine really good coaching, strong discipline, um, high work ethic and talent, it's a pretty good mix. Brad, can you put Hamish Hartlett in that elite midfield category now? I think most people who, who follow footy really closely have known that Hamish Hartlett's a very, very talented and capable footballer for a long time. It's just been a matter of getting his body to the stage where he could get out there consistently. And I don't think he's surprising anyone in, um, uh, who follows footy really closely that he can play. Um, it's just been getting out there that's been his challenge. So, um, you know, I think when you classify someone as in the, in the elite bracket, I think consistency and, and um, doing it over a period of time I think is important. But there's no doubt when you look at capable midfielders, he's as good as any. What's, the, what's different about him this year in terms of the style they're playing, do you think? Oh, I, I think Ken um, has put his own stamp on the way Port want to play, and I think it's on the back of, of great work rate. You know, there's... There's, there's a lot of things structurally and tactically that you can look really closely at, but I think the thing that we've taken out of the way Port applied more than anything is just that they're working really hard for each other. You know, they support each other really well, and um, you know they've got talent on, on all the lines. So um, you know, there are some things that we're going to really focus on, but overriding all that is just work, and they, they run really hard and they bat pretty deep in the midfield. So um, yeah, you know, they're going to be a real challenge for do us in feel, there. Do you feel like being the fairy tale killers? No, I don't. I don't. Um, I don't feel sorry for any other club. I mean, we've, you know, we've got ourselves in a situation um, where we're we think we're doing a lot of things right, but we're not getting the results. And um, but the the reason for not getting the results in the last few games are really clear. And we've just got to continue to fix those areas. And we're really confident that that if we fix those areas, then you know we can compete with anyone. Um, but Port Adelaide haven't lost this year and we've got to make sure this week's their first. Is delivery inside forward 50 an issue for you? No, no. I mean, I, I, under, I suppose I don't understand the question really. Um, we, I think we ranked fourth in scores from inside 50s in the competition. Um, we had 63 inside 50s. We scored at roughly 50% uh, on the weekend. We generated 31 scoring shots. I think we're scoring okay. Um, you know, but... Could we do it better? For sure. Um, and, and we'll continue to work on that. Um, but when we had you know, Aaron Black playing, his, I think, his fourth game, Magic Door playing his second, you know, we understand that they're going to make mistakes at times. Um, and we're certainly going to make some mistakes kicking the footy inside forward 50 at time. But, but I think it's, it's been a strength rather than a weakness. Just further to that, um, I was just having a look at the stats before. I think you're number one for disposal efficiency, but you're 16 for marks inside 50. So, I mean, those two things seem to be at odds. Can you yeah. sort of explain that? Oh, I think we've got dangerous forwards and, and you know, we like to kick the ball to them. Um, but I, I, there's no doubt Hawthorne put a really strong focus on making sure they could bring the ball to ground inside our forward 50. And, you know, Josh, Josh Gibson's been a lead at that for a long time. Um, you know, he gets across and spoils really well. You know, Brian Lake's a, you know, coming up for his 200th game, All-Australian defender. You know, they do that pretty well. So, you know, we've got to, we've got to strike the balance between, you know, really uh, capitalising on our key forward strength um, and, and using other options going forward because you know, I think Hawthorne did that really well. They, they were able to defend the long high ball coming in really well. Do you look at your position holistically and say, actually, we've been a little bit un unlucky or does luck no. not come into it? No, we haven't been unlucky, not, not, not in any way, shape or form. Um, we've got exactly what we've deserved. Um, you know, and we deserve to be in games um, because we've done a lot of things right. We deserve, deserve to be in a position to win, um, but we haven't deserved to win them. I, I see it really simplistically in that regard. Um, luck doesn't play a factor at all. Um, you know, we, in fact, if we won them, we probably would have been lucky. So uh, we don't consider ourselves unlucky. We've just got to tighten up our game and, and be really clear on the things we've got to, got to fix and, and spend an enormous amount of time on the track. And I, I keep coming back to Lindsay Thomas. You know, people say, what's been the turnaround? Well, it's hard work. There's no secret. 
And you know, it's like most things in life. You know, it's, you, you've got to work hard to achieve those things. And you know, we'll continue to work hard, and I've got no doubt we'll fix them. And, and when we do, you know, I think we're capable of being up there with the good sides. You've won as many quarters as anyone, I think. Um, so, like, is it just a concentration thing? I mean, just sustaining that for four quarters? Would that be the number one... Uh, explanation for the one four record. Yeah, I, I think that's true, and I think that, that the, if you look at the very best sides, they they limit their, the number of mistakes they make and the types of mistakes they make to a, to a very narrow range. Um, and I think with us, we've had a broad range of mistakes we've been making. Um, unfortunately, they've been um, they've been in in specific periods of, of games where they've cost us. Now, the Hawthorne game was much better on the weekend. Is he going to sting me or you? That's what it's coming out. It's going to sting me or sting you. Oh, I don't think I'm allergic. But... Oh, I hate um, <laughs> um, Yeah, so I, I think that, that in, in terms of um, it's concentration, but we are, a, um, you know, we've got r really um, players who are of great character and, and do their best, you know, in every situation. It hasn't been through a lack of discipline. It's just been through a lack of... of of concentration and sometimes youth um, breeds inconsistency and we're trying to stamp that inconsistency out. Just Tony some Carrot and Hanson, Brett, where, where they sit at the moment? Yeah, we just, we just, um, we're speaking about them with our, our medical guys just then. We're, we're really hopeful that they'll get through the session, but, um, you know, we, it's a really strong point in footy at the moment that the doctor has the ultimate say on medical decisions. Well, the one say that he doesn't have uh, uh, is the one on selection. So once the doctor passes them fit to play, it'll still become a, a selection decision. Now, if the doctor rules them out, they're out. But if the doctor rules them in, it comes down to my decision, not his. So uh, unless I'm comfortable with the, the level of training they've done, how they perform in the main session, they won't play. Um, and we're in a fortunate position where we've got good key position players who can replace them. Is Port Adelaide the sort of opposition that you could use two, two guys like that? Oh, I think any opposition is. Um, you know, we... we you know, we think that the combination of Aaron Black and, and Majak Dor, Lockie Hansen, Robbie Tarrant, you know, we've just got to keep selecting players in form and, and who are at full fitness. Um, but, you know, I think Alipati Carlisle's uh, just a, a terrific defender these days. You know, he's done a terrific job. I think Tom Jonas, not many, not many people know much about him, but he's, you know, he's a very capable defender and has done a really good job for Port this year. So, you know, and Cameron O'Shea's there as well. So I think they've... You know, to think that we can get an advantage there, I think, would be foolish. You know, we've just got to pick the strongest, fittest forward line we can that we think is going to win us the game. Is it Graham? Oh, come on. When you hear of um, uh, allegations of racial taunts towards Magic Door, any one of your players, does that yeah. make you sick? I, I just thought we were past that as a society, and you know, I'd like to commend the, the supporter that came forward and reported it, but I, I think that we, as a society, we are beyond the um, keeping your mouth shut when you, when you hear or, or see things like that, you know, report these people. Um, the AFL have, have a, a number that people can text um, and report these people, and everyone should do it. You know, support us from both sides. There's, there's no place for that in our game. Now, I want to make it clear that, that none of our players heard, um, heard what was said, so um, they can't be offended by it. They didn't hear it. But, um, but I can't stress enough, there's no place for that in our game. If you hear it, if you're in the crowd and you hear that sort of behaviour, Report it. It's your responsibility. You, know, you shouldn't just sit idly by. You know, every single person, it's their responsibility to make sure, sure they report that because we've got to stamp it out of our game. It's got no place in footy and it's got no place in society. Just uh, one more on the ground. I mean, you, you've played there, what, three times now? They haven't played there at all. Does that give you any sort of advantage at all or are you still getting used to it, do you think? I, I think we're pretty used to it. I mean, we, we really enjoy playing there. Um, we think it, it, it suits us pretty well. Um, but I, I don't think it's going to give either side an advantage. What we do hope um, will give us an advantage is the crowd down there. You know, it's, this is going to be the last time we play in Hobart for about 15 months. You know, the ground's going to be redeveloped. So it's the last chance for the people of Hobart to, to get out and see elite level footy and Porter playing as well as any side in the competition right now. And, and you know, we think we can take it right up to them. So. I'm sure it's going to be a really high standard game, um, but you know we need to make sure that Blundstone Arena is a real fortress for us, and we need the pe people of Hobart to come out and support us. Is it a ground that you have to structure up slightly different compared to MCG already? Huh? Um, not, not really. I don't think um, you can certainly score quickly there because you can, you know, provided the conditions are, are okay, um, you know, you can really um, transition the ball really quickly. Uh, you can get the ball deep into your forward line really quickly and. Unfortunately, Sydney did that really well against us in the third quarter, um, and 
you know, so I, I think that the structure's the same, but you've got to be aware that you can get scored against really quickly, but you can also score quickly yourself. Right, where, where does it sit in terms of size? Like, you know, say SCG's small, yeah. Subi's big, where, where's this? Oh, look, it, it's, it's the same. I mean, it's a, it's a true cricket ground. Um, it's yeah. basically uh, a smaller version of the MCG. But, but only slightly smaller. I mean, it's not quite as wide, but the, the length's really good. Um, and it's just a little bit narrower than the, than the G. But it's a pristine playing surface. It's as good as any surface um, in the country. Brad, Majak's goal kicking, is it a work in progress? Oh, he's, he's a really reliable set shot. I know that he kicked three points in the third quarter, but that surprised us. Um, you know, we thought that the free kick from the interchange infringement was a was a certainty. Uh, he very rarely misses from those situations. What what we're doing a lot of work with him on is he's he's more what we'd call creative goal kicking. Um, he's a very straight kick, um, but you know he's on a very acute angle. He he tries to uh, he doesn't reduce the margin for error much. So we'll we'll work with him on that. But he's a really quick learner, so. I'm sure we'll change that pretty quickly. Brad, you mentioned the selection squeeze, obviously, with the okay. tall guys. How do you balance, I suppose, playing the, the experienced guys versus giving Aaron Black and Majak George shown quite a bit, you know, a bit of an extended run at, at senior level to get their confidence up? Yeah, I, I think it, it, it is a balancing act, but, I mean, we. bottom line is we're, I've got my eye on, on a slightly bigger picture, but, you know, that's not at the expense of playing players in form. So we'll just pick the best available. Um, and, you know, we're, we're not too worried about... Um, exposing young players to AFL footy. I mean, we've got a lot of players who, who are in form. Now, Blackie and, and Majak are inexperienced, but you know, they're, the, they're the best available right now to help us win. You know, Will Sirikoski is sick of being the non-playing emergency. Um, you know, he's playing great footy because you know, if he plays this week uh, and makes his debut, um, you know, it'll be because he's in form, not because we want to expose him to senior footy. It'd be hard to drop Aaron Black on after that performance last week. No, we won't be dropping Aaron Black.